Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. And today we're going to talk about smoothing blends with your airbrush. Uh, so <clears throat> here I have a nice little magical sword on my Keeper of Secrets and <coughs> excuse me, we're going to go ahead and smooth it all out with our airbrush. And I blocked in some basic blends uh, with just some wet blending and stuff like that uh, very quickly, but it's still quite rough as you can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to fix it with the airbrush. Now to do this, we're going to use a lot of different inks and things like that. We're also going to use a little paint. So here I've got some Payne's Gray, some Turquoise, and some White, uh, Dollar Rowney all, and then I also have some Glacier Blue uh, from uh, Vallejo. Okay, so uh, our airbrush we'll be using today is the Iwata uh, Highline. And what makes this good is it has a couple different things that make it good for doing these small blends. And I use this technique on most miniatures. I'll come back in and smooth and do some final work with the airbrush. So first of all, it has a nice little control here that uh, I can set how much air is coming out. It has a lock back here on the back that you can say how far back you pull the trigger. So it'll stop that from going all the way back. Most importantly, it has this kind of a tip. You see how this tip is solid and actually conical and that it comes down. That lets me very, very accurately control the spray pattern. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, we're gonna work in a really, really small area. A side note, I've actually recorded this about three times with different miniatures, and I was never super happy with how it looked because it was always tough to get it to record on camera. Because what you're doing here is really just finishing stuff. So the first key is I have some white paint extremely thinned. This is about seven to one thinner to ink. And we're gonna, we have to really use the dual action nature of our airbrush. So our airbrush works in two ways how far you push it down and how much you pull it back. We're gonna do very little of both. So I'm gonna push it down just a little to get some air going, and then I'm just gonna start slowly rocking it back to get tiny little bursts of paint. So, with that being said, let's give this a shot. So we're gonna start with the white, okay? All right. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to go somewhat beyond where I want to actually be white because I just want to smooth out some of that white into these other areas. So you notice I'm kind of going over and you'll notice in some places I kind of get up onto the other up onto the other sword face. That's okay because it'll only be a tiny amount that oversprays and we can back that out later. We can always come in with our final touch with our brush and re-edge everything. The key with this method of smoothing with your airbrush is you want very, very thin paint and you want to be very accurate with your airbrush. This takes time and practice, but this is the kind of thing you can do. All of the blends that you see on my models, unless it's like an ultra tiny area, but generally down to any 28 millimeter miniature, I will smooth some of it out with the airbrush. I'll come back in and do a little work. There's just no reason not to. When you can be this precise, when I can get in here to just this face of the sword and hit that. The other thing when it's this thin is you need to have good control over your air to paint ratio. So you'll notice that I'm always just starting with letting out a little bit of air and then I just back in a little bit of the paint very slowly. Now because it's ink, we're much less susceptible, susceptible to things like tip dry with the white. So that helps us keep a nice, even, smooth application. The ink is also semi-transparent. So it lets us build it up very carefully, very slowly over time. You notice I also have the rest of the miniature quite wrapped up. She's all covered in plastic and uh, AK interactive putty and stuff like that because I, um, <clears throat> you know, obviously I don't want to overspray on her. So the key here is 
we're always paying attention to the direction we're spraying. We're working very slowly, very little paint. And we just work it slowly and rely on that transparency. All right, so now you can see how much stronger the white is over the whole sword. We can get under there a little bit too. But you don't want to be heavy handed. You don't want to come in here and just start blasting or you get spider webs with the ink. So it just takes an amount of practice with your airbrush. There's no reason you should ever get spider webbing. You just need to be practiced enough with your airbrush to actually be able to control the flow. And that's a thing that takes time. It's not, it's not a free thing you just get to do. It is something that takes a little work, but anybody can get there and any airbrush can do it. I just happen to like this one because it's really easy to put a nice point on things. Okay, so with our white laid down and that's smoothed out, now we're gonna go ahead, clean out our airbrush. So as usual, for our airbrush cleaning, we just put some water in, then we dump it out, then we put another little thing of water in, then we backfill it, then we dump it. Third time's a charm, swish, 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 backfill, 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 dump it out, and then with just the little bubbles that are left, we blow out what should be just clean water. And there you go. Nice and clean. Everything gone, no problems. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the mid-tone blue and just smooth that down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna go eight to one with this. This is our turquoise ink, which will be, which will be a blue tone that matches to the underlying paint that I used. So we get that right there, nice and thin. We do a little test here on our hand first, as always, to make sure it's gonna come out okay. And you can see how nice and thin that is, but I can build it up there. Okay, good. So now we come back to our sword again. And again, we're gonna start up here, uh, kinda into the white we just laid down. Start with just air. And then we slowly work in the blue. Now what I'm effectively doing here are just really controlled glazes with the airbrush. Anything I'm doing here, I could do with the brush, okay? The trick is, would I want to? Like, why spend all that time with the brush when I can do it so much faster here with the airbrush? The other thing this is really good for is adding filters. And if you watch a lot of um, professional airbrushers, they'll do this kind of thing all the time when they do like paintings where they'll add, I'm sorry, I'm right off camera there, I apologize. Where they'll add um, very careful filters over things using a technique like this. They'll use like very, very thin colors or inks to add a nice thin filter um, over, oftentimes you see it on skin tones and stuff like that when they're doing a painting, so that that way they can get a really nice, clean, sharp skin tone. Uh, lets you do lots of nice tricks like that. So, because the ink's always gonna dry a little more transparent, we work our way around, going back and forth. A little bit of overspray there, fine. There you go. So we just keep working all our all our lights down. Just effectively glazing in with that turquoise 
getting those nice color transitions nice and smooth. Again, I could we could do this with a brush, but it, you know, you know, with glazing with a brush, it can often take a long time, especially to get it smooth. The airbrush is just a better tool for this type of thing. It's a great tool for glazing. And by the way, we can still come back in when we're all done and do some more work with the brush. Like if we have something that's not quite perfect, you can always go back to the brush and just kind of finish it off there with your last stuff. But there we go. Now you can see we've got a lot of that white toned back. We've got the blue there all nice and baked in. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah, everything looks real nice there. Okay. All right. So, once again, move that to the side. Get it around there, dump the main stuff, and then swizzle, swizzle, backfill, dump, water, backfill, dump, blow it out. Clean as a whistle. Um, I often one times wonder, like I hear people say, well, I don't want to get my airbrush out because it's so hard to change colors. It takes so long. Okay. Well, then you're not cleaning it right is my answer um, because that took me 10 seconds. So, you know, just saying. All right, so now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drops of thinner. And now we're gonna go ahead and use our Payne's Gray to fill in our shadows. So we backfill to get it all nice and mixed up. As usual, we do some tests on the back of our hand. Looks good. And then once again, we're gonna come in and very carefully here, we're just gonna smooth those final areas. We want to be nice and dark. Now you'll notice I had already edge highlighted this once. I do that mid process because it just helps me kind of understand, you know, the edges and how it's gonna look. I'm going to have to go back and do it again after I'm done with this because obviously this isn't going to respect the uh, the edges that I have. And that's fine, right? That's, that's okay. Um, we don't need it to. It's a precise tool when you use it like this. It's not that precise. I can't edge highlight with it. Let's not get crazy. Next week, I'm going to see a video pop up. It's like, edge highlighting with your airbrush. Here's how. And I'll be like, oh, well, that was wrong. I guess you can. But I don't do that. I do, however, use it like this. So you can see how I'm just doing these very careful little subtle hits here. Let me see if I can zoom in really, really, really close for you. This will shake for a moment. Okay. I will not have a big range of movement here, but this should give you a good idea. Okay. So you can see how I'm just gonna work on this flat of the blade. So we start with just the air, and I just rock my hand just a little bit, and then we'll get this bottom part of the blade here, okay? You can see how using between the angle of that and that we get a nice, smooth transition all the way down that blade. Okay. And 
And obviously there's more work to do when we're done because when I'm done after this smoothing, I'm gonna come in and re-edge everything and then I will also uh, go ahead and, you know, put darks into all these little recessed areas here, this on our sword, fill out the gems. But this just makes the actual glazing process of the sword so much faster and gives you this nice smooth transition through this type of power sword. It's just really a great technique for this sort of thing. So there you go. Now we go from that rough blade to something nice and smooth, good transitions all throughout. And that's really all there is to it. Um, the keys again are very, very thin paint and an airbrush either, you want either like a 0.3 or 0.35 or 0.2 needle. You don't want any bigger than that, you'll be able to do it. The tip on the Highline makes it really nice, but again, it's the control of your pressure to the air you're letting out. That's the thing that's really gonna make it work. When you can get, and a good way to practice is just to get yourself some piece, you know, a piece of paper, right? And just start doing things like writing your name. Right? If you can write your name, I know that doesn't show up very well because it's very thin ink, but if you can do that, just do little thin lines and see how small you can get it, right? Just give yourself lots of that practice to where it becomes second nature that you can start doing stuff like that. And when you can trace those kinds of lines, doing stuff like this on your miniatures is gonna become really, really easy. So just a little bit of reps with your airbrush with stuff like that will really help you smooth things like that out. And it's just a great trick for uh, really working with your airbrush as a tool throughout your painting process. Not just in the beginning to prime or set base coats, but as something that becomes synergistic back and forth between your brush and your paintbrush, where you're making both work in tandem with each other. So with that being said, that brings that to a close. Uh, if you have more questions about how to do this, which I, I know this is something that's really tricky. Um, like I said, I tried to do this a couple times before and I just didn't like how it came out. You couldn't really tell because I was doing it on flesh and the difference is so minimal and in, in on camera, but it feels big in real life. Hopefully this is stark enough you could see what I did. Um, this kind of like very fine blending is tough to capture on camera. Um, but if you do have questions, drop them down below. I'm always happy to answer any questions. Give it a like if you liked it. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. Uh, we have new videos here every Saturday. If you have topics you'd like to see me cover in future videos, drop that down below. Always happy to take viewer requests. But as always, I very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.